big big man upstairs is asking, Alex, I spotted your Twitter post about building a smallish PC. As someone who has been out of PC gaming for 15 years or so, beside my recent uh, OLED Steam Deck purchase, what would you recommend spec-wise for someone to go for now if they wanted to have a solid gaming experience with AAA games for the next 12 to 18 months or so without going all out on top tier cards like a 4090? I'm enjoying the Steam Deck, but also conscious of its limitations. So I'd love to have a main gaming rig for those more demanding games. Thanks all. Hope you had a lovely January. Hmm. Alex? Mini, is this person saying also mini ITX they want? Um, I don't I'd think so. No. I don't but, think so. Um, you know, uh, I, think, I think ultimately, whichever way you end up, you could get a pretty efficient rig with, with smallish parts that don't generate a lot of heat. Yeah, you could end up with something. I think, uh, honestly, I think Riches could almost offer a better opinion here than myself regarding this, like, uh, not breaking the bank power yeah, performance I mean, parts. Yeah, it's difficult, right? Because I don't really know the out sort of the, the, the output resolution that you're targeting. But if I was going to make such a PC within a reasonable budget, which I think is what this guy's asking, big man upstairs. Man upstairs, <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, basically you start with, um, I think the, the mid-range parts from AMD and Intel on the CPU side are both excellent at this point. Ryzen 7600, um, Core i5, 13400, 13400F. They're both very similar power consumption during gaming. Uh, cheap. Even a 12400F, uh, they're super cheap at the moment. So yeah, consider one of those. GPU-wise... I've got to recommend the 4070. I've got one right here. Or the Founders Edition specifically of the 4070 or the 4070 Super. 4070 mm -hmm. Super is a fair bit better. But, you know, just look at this card. It's an actual, you know, remember when graphics cards with this form factor? You know, small-ish. Yes. <laughs> rather than the monstrous AIB um, third-party boards that we have these days. But, you know, I've got, you know, the other thing about this is it's one of the few benchmarks runs that I've done where I can actually take the card out of the machine afterwards and I don't burn my hand on right. any any metal part of the, of the of the card itself. 4070, 4070 Super, I mean, they're not the sort of high-end performance parts, but they are basically good for um, uh, 4K via DLSS, right? 1440p, brilliant. So that would be my GPU recommendation for that. And um, I'd probably go for 32 gigs of RAM at this point, if you're talking about future proofing. Mm -hmm. uh, any mm -hmm. any sort of dissension to my uh, recommendations no, there, Alex? Uh, don't go extremely heavy on the SSD. Uh, yeah. Do only as much storage as you need at the speed you need. I do not still think that you need a PCIe 4 Gen I think drive. You're quite right. You do not need that. So it can get pretty cheap. Um, and I guess if you already have a monitor that you're set up, but I would say stay at 1440p and do a high refresh rate, 120 to 144. You don't need anything better than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair point. Yeah. Uh, I can't really think of too much more to add to that, but I just think we're kind of like actually in a really good place with mid-range parts, not just in performance terms, but also in terms of power efficiency. I mean, the power efficiency that NVIDIA are doing with the 4070 is actually really, really impressive. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, you get 12 gigs of RAM there. That's the other thing, the other requirement, minimum 12 gigs of RAM on the uh, on the graphics card for a forward-looking build. It's, it's kind of 50-50 on 8 gigs. I mean, we're going to be taking a view on that as and when, you know, games mm -hmm. come out. Uh, which reminds me, Alex, I uh, still need to go to Germany and uh, yeah, yeah, uh, that hand over these 4060, parts. right? Yeah, and 3060, yeah. 